Neil Gray with a five dollar bill. Sit back, grab a glass of new grape, and listen in as we talk to MC Taylor of His Golden Messenger about his new album, Jump for Joy, and why these songs seem to be more autobiographical than usual. You know, once I had I had written a few of the songs for this record, I realized that um, that a lot of the uh, imagery, the vignettes that appear in the songs were kind of coming directly out of my own experience um, in in way in a way that that I maybe hadn't done quite before. It was feeling a little closer to autobiographical. Uh, not entirely so, but uh-huh. closer to that than than I had or than I have written in the past. But I I realized that, you know, uh, while I was doing that, there, there were going to be moments that I would want or need to to stretch the stretch the facts. Um, so, <laughs> you know, some some of what happens in the songs are things that didn't necessarily happen to me, but happened to somebody that I, that I knew or, or, you know, were invented for the purposes of moving the song along in whatever direction it needed to go. Can you give me an example? Um, I mean, I won't, I won't go super specific because okay. I, <laughs> I, I like, uh, I like, I like mystery, right. okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there's sort of a, um, a, uh, uh you know the song jesus is bored there is a lot of imagery that um that comes from a specific time in my life yeah god i'm only 16 incapable of mine i want to be something can you give me a sign part of part of it is my own memories part of it is other stuff that i um you know, either witnessed or or heard about later. Right. So but you mentioned Jesus is Bored. It's preceded by a track called Little Pink Church, which is uh, kind of a segue type 50 seconds. That's right. But yeah. well, but there is a religious overtone to some of the content in this uh, in this album. Uh, what is your relationship with religion? Um, I don't I don't really have one. Um, I mean, I would I would say that the tone is um you know there i certainly have always been interested in in the spirit which i think um you know is something that i have disassociated from from religion i'm not someone that goes to a church or a temple i don't identify as any any particular religion but i'm very interested in matters of the of the spirit and um the way that the um, the way that the universe is is animated, so um, <laughs> um, I, I think that's where I'm coming from. Okay, all right, very good. So uh, my understanding is the album was recorded in about a two week period, late in fall of 2022, out somewhere in West Texas. I want to say El Paso, yeah. just because it's yeah. West Texas town of El Paso, but it wasn't El Paso. But yeah. tell me a bit about the the environment and the vibe uh, around the making of the record. Yeah, it was actually close to El Paso. It oh, was good. about forty. <laughs> it was about forty minutes, um, forty minutes east of El Paso. Uh, so we flew into El Paso. It's a place called Sonic Ranch, uh-huh. and. Um, this is a, a set of studio facilities. I believe there are now eight eight studios that exist um, on this massive uh, compound. Basically, it's a working pecan farm. So you know, they're still they're still uh, when we were there, they were still harvesting pecans. Um, but the the person that runs it. Um, grew up there on that farm his family is you know his family owns the the i mean when i say huge plot of land we're talking thousands and thousands of acres Acres, pecan trees and so um that's a lot of (laughs) time yeah so his family has been there for a long time and at some point you know i feel like it was probably 25 years ago he he decided that he wanted to um to 
build a recording studio. Um, yeah. That's basically the short version. Uh, okay. And um, it's kind of become a legendary destination spot for a lot of musicians um, because the vibe is just really kind of otherworldly, almost almost alien, a little bit haunted. Um, you know, he has he has he has gear that um, any um, any state of the art recording studio would have, but. Uh, but he also just has this place that's really full of vibe. So, um, yeah, so that's where we spent about two weeks working on on the bulk of Jump for Joy. It wasn't all completed there. We right. probably finished about 90% of it there. That's pretty good. So, and you worked with a guy, Scott Hirsch, who was your engineer? Yeah, and Scott and I are very old friends. We go back 30 years. So oh, we met when we were... So you must have we kind kids. of delegated roles that have worked between it. If you've worked together for a long time, you kind of can finish each other's sentences, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we know each other well. Um, and um, we, we've done all kinds of different things together. And it's mostly been playing in bands together. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, um, you know, I think we just we just share a language and share a certain aesthetic. And he's played in his. He's 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 had a hand in almost every his record, I think, except for maybe one. Right. So he's he definitely knows what I'm about, and um, he you know he won't let me get away with too much when I'm feeling particularly lazy. He'll. <laughs> He'll make me do it right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. Uh, do you need poking and prodding every once in a while to finish things? Uh, I mean, sometimes you know, I'm 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 relatively, uh, I'm relatively productive as an artist. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, productive, <laughs> productive, and just in terms of you know, I I write a lot of songs, and but yeah, I can get a little lazy. Okay, all right, well, that's cool. And so uh, the uh, the album. As as we meant, kind of briefly mentioned, a few snippets of tracks that are under a minute long or so. So right. that leads me to believe that there is a concept. Uh, you you want the album to possibly be listened to from beginning to end rather than individual tracks. Would that be the case? I mean, you know, I don't get to decide, but <laughs> I <true. laughs> um, I I generally am still trying to make records that feel cohesive i put a lot of thought into sequencing and yeah. um you know I, I think of those little interstitial pieces of music as some kind of connective tissue between some of the songs sometimes i feel like i want one song to go after another song but i want there to be some kind of breath in between yep so that's that's the way that i'm using those little pieces of music it's it's something that i i've actually done a lot of over the years um just adding these little bits and pieces that kind of work to build a fuller a fuller musical world on the record mm -hmm. and part of that world seems to come from new orleans on a couple of tracks uh, uh there's a track well, the title track jump for joy has a definite new orleans vibe and shinbone i think has a reference to uh Chavatula. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, why? Why? What, what's your relationship with New Orleans music? Um, I mean, uh, I kind of think of New Orleans as one of the one of the seats of um, of of um, certainly American music, if not American culture. It's yep. um, it's where all kinds of different things get smashed together and what we have ended up with is these um are these very unique uh r really rhythms that have given birth to you know a type of a type of music that um it certainly has thre threaded its way through through a lot of what I do, if only in spirit and not necessarily in, in sound, but, but for this particular, um, 
a record in, in in the band, a couple members of the band that have been in the band for um, for um, a couple of years at this point, both lived in New Orleans and studied really um, studied that kind of music really deeply. So the piano player um, who is, you know, that's kind of like the, the most obvious New Orleans thing is, um, you know, he's like a pretty deep student of, Professor Longhair, James Booker, yeah, um, this would Dr. Be Sam John. Frybush, is it? Sam Frybush, yeah, yeah. incredible keyboard player, yeah. Um, and, and then likewise, uh, the, our our drummer Nick Falk also spent years living in New Orleans and learning to play those grooves. So, like you know, he's playing on Jump for Joy. He's playing a groove that we would refer to as the Big Four. And that's what they would call it in New Orleans. And as we, you know, as we were talking about arranging that tune while we were in Texas, we were saying like, why don't we do this with like the the big four groove on this, you know? So so that's definitely like very explicitly a New Orleans uh, vibe, right? And uh, lyrically, I think there's a line in Jump for Joy about the seas are rising. Uh, so, which leads me to the weather seems to be going berserk over, especially in the States these days. And it, mm. uh, New Orleans itself has been flooded, uh, Katrina and all that. So is that on your mind? I mean, I have two kids, so it there can't you know. not, it can't not be. Yeah, um, yeah. um, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I have a unique perspective on the way that climate change is, is uh yeah changing existence in in the country i guess because i i travel around so much right so um you know i logistic i'm i'm affected logistically by by it all yeah uh you know two weeks ago i was in um british columbia playing a festival and the wildfire smoke there was so intense that it was almost unbreathable Right. And, um, you know, we're, we're having storms, um, you know, storms at an intensity that we're, we don't know how to deal with. It's, it's, it's grounding planes. It's making outdoor shows impossible. So, I yep. mean, all stuff that like, that's fine. It's not the end of the world for me, but at, at the same time, it's, you know, I'm kind of like, you you guys are all feeling this, right? This is a real thing. It's not going away. Yeah. And if nothing um, else, it's very disruptive. Like, for instance, I was supposed to do an interview with somebody else about an hour ago in the States, but they had to cancel because there was a storm blew through wherever they were and their internet was gone. <laughs> you know, was yeah. Just, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. I mean, just la just last week in Durham, we had a we had a storm pop up out of the blue like there was no war nobody knew anything about it it wasn't yep. predicted there was no warning and this storm was almost like a tor <laughs> like a tornado which is not a type of storm that durham ever experiences and it yep. absolutely flattens the city yep yep so like all of these all of these hundred year old trees were all down and we couldn't you couldn't even drive around the city because every road was blocked <laughs> man oh man Okay, well, on a lighter note, uh, New Grape. <laughs> That's yeah. quite the video, uh, very entertaining. What, um, what was the the driving force behind that? Was it an idea you had or one of your team? How did it come about? I was fired, said I couldn't live without water. You wanted, wanted to put out the fire. I'm just a nail in the house of the universe. That that uh, the concept for that video was sort of written and scripted by a friend of mine named Rhett Rogers, who is uh, a um, 
a photographer and a videographer and, and a musician too. And just right. a guy that, a guy that I know through Nathaniel Ratliff actually. Right. And, right. um, I just told my team when, you know, the idea of making a video came up, I told everybody, if we're going to make a video, then I want it to be funny. It's mm -hmm. got to be, it's got to make people laugh because I've made, you know, not a ton of videos, but I've made a handful of videos in my life. They've always been pretty serious, kind of pensive, sort of inward looking and for one thing like i just i just find i found the idea of even thinking about making another video like that very boring right. and i yeah. just i just wasn't i wasn't interested and also you know i i i feel like i am at a time in my life, an era in my life where I'm just trying to move through the world with, with a little more lightness when, when I can, if that right. makes sense. I mean, thematically the stuff that exists on jump for joy is still, is still heavy, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to step with a lightness that um, maybe is a little new for his golden messenger. Uh, in a public way. Anybody that knows me knows that like, you know, the kind of stuff that we're getting up to in the jump for joy video is just like part of, part of how I am. Like, because I liked, I, I love, you know, when I'm with friends, I feel like I'm generally like pretty light and, right. and just, you know, so I wanted to like put some more of that vibe out there. Well, that kind of brings us back to the original uh, topic of your personality or your character that you create. So do you feel like you're taking on a character even when you're doing his golden messenger and, you know, I mean, playing live I mean, or whatever. His, his golden messenger has become a character <laughs> that I, yeah. that I have no choice, but to, <laughs> you know, I, um, like it is a, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a costume at this point, not in a way that is, um, that is false, but, you know, I think simply because there are enough people out there that understand me through the songs that are on his golden messenger records, which, um, you know, there's no possible way they could, they could uh those songs however deep they go could ever actually describe me as an entire person sure um so consequently that's those songs are who i am to people that listen to my music and 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 that's cool and yeah. so when i when i sh you know i'm playing a show i want to give them that thing that they that they um came looking for but right. at the same time the person on that stage is me yeah you know what i mean yeah. just like the character of michael crow on the record is me yeah and also isn't me yeah yep yep so when you're doing you're doing a, i think a solo show tomorrow and then you're doing like full band thing a few days later are those the same yep. you <laughs> when you're by yourself or with someone <laughs> yeah i think so yeah, yeah i think that i think they're they're mostly the same me i mean i think that that um i think that when i'm playing a show alone it may be like a in a way in terms of personality coming off the stage maybe it's slightly more concentrated version of me because i have more space to you know more emotional space to fill off the stage if that makes sense yeah um i'm responsible for uh for like all, all of the conjuring that's happening. Whereas when I'm on stage with my band, we're like, it's almost like we're, you know, playing Frisbee or something. And we're kind of like tossing the energy all over the stage. Right. So when you're playing with your band, I mean, obviously you're the leader of the, of your, but how much collaboration do you want? Do you expect do you get from the rest of the band? Do you talk about things specifically before you put together a set list or go about to hit the road? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we do. I, I, 
I invite collaboration with people that I know understand what I'm getting at with my music and people that will take the that sort of collaborative relationship seriously. So, you know, it's not like, it's not an open invitation for anybody to, you know, like this, this crew of people that I am on stage with, they're, they're all there for very specific reasons because, um, because I love them first of all. And musically they do a thing that is super sympathetic to what I'm doing. Right. And, and th most of them perf uh, perform on the record as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The band that plays live with me is the band that's on the record. So that's got to yeah. that's got to help because everybody's kind of knows where yeah. it comes from, right? Yeah, super, super helpful, super yeah. helpful. Yeah, very exciting. Okay, well, we'll just we'll wrap it up with the, uh, the the album ends with a song called "Sunset on the Faders." Do you have anything you can yeah. tell us about that? And why is it the last song on the record? Where did it come from? How are we, however you want to elaborate on it. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think of the first song on the record and the last songs as sort of a, you know, if the first song is sort of like a, a preamble or a foreword to, to this, well, however many songs it is, 12 song, uh, sort of reckoning with a life lived with and in music. Then the last song almost feels like some sort of coda to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a song that talks about speaking in a dead language. Yep. Um, but it's not meant to be. Um, not sure what the word is. It's 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 meant to be a song of of uplift. You know, right. like I'm I'm certainly celebrating this um this shared language that I have, you know, not only with the people that I make music with, but with the people that are connected to my music in some way. So, you know, I'm singing we speak in a dead language, but I could have also just as easily said, you know, we speak in in like a secret language it wouldn't have it wouldn't have sung as well right it wouldn't yeah. have had as much wouldn't it wouldn't have had as much drama to it but yep. uh um i think that's what i'm getting at there is that we have this secret shared language as people that um are sort of energized and animated by music and it kind of goes out with, it's a much louder track than the rest of the album. And there's a great yep. little guitar solo at the end. So it, right. you leave them rocking out. Who's playing the the guitar? That's uh, Chris Berner is his uh, name. Yep, yep. And, yeah, he's uh, he's the guitar player in his. He also mixed the record with me and he also mastered the record. So he, ha he plays a lot of different roles in the band. Cool. cool. But he's an incredible guitar player. Excellent. All righty. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for now. Hopefully, have you have you been to New Zealand? Have you played down here? I can't remember. I've seen no, uh, I no, I have no. All right. Well, no. that's something that needs to be rectified. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> all righty. But in the meantime, good luck with the record. Uh, thanks for sharing all this on the day of the release, and uh, get out and celebrate some. Have a good Thank time. Thank you so much. All right. Thank okay. you very much. Right. Bye bye.